Okay, let's get in further to the speech of the day. I'm joined live by Beirut-based journalist Martin Jay to discuss all the details. Hi, Martin. So there we go. Trump addressed what the leaders of some 50 Muslim-majority countries, but of course Iran was not included. Just what do you read into that first Well, Iran just doesn't feature in, into this his big thinking and a big picture, you know, which is to um, largely rejig U.S. foreign policy back to a 1980s model, to reinvest and regalvanize relations with Saudi Arabia first and foremost, and to appease the Saudis with their ideolo ideology in the region. You know, look at in Iran in the last um, a few couple of years, it's 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 starting to get it's spreading in the region. Its influence is certainly um, reaching out. And um, he left, he has to leave Iran off because that would just be really bad politics. I think the point that your correspondent touched on was the most relevant one, which is um, I think today was really all about defense procurement. I mean, what he was basically saying to all of those um, delegates, and some of whom I might add have appalling human rights records in their own countries. He was basically saying, look, we don't care about your human rights. We don't care about what you do to your own people. We'll actually even help you stay in power. The most important thing that you have to learn from this conference mm -hmm. is that if you buy American guns, we'll help you and we'll be, we'll be beside you all the way. And I think that was the message that came through um, quite um, fervently. Well, it has been a profitable trip so far. Trump has accused Saudi Arabia, we know, of funding terrorism in the past. He's not alone in that. Is everyone gathered at that address in Riyadh able to look past that fact, do you think? No, not at all. No, I mean, there are quite a few people there who who do look beyond um, uh, this very blinkered view that, um, that Saudi Arabia has no links and no ties ideologically or otherwise with any of these groups. I mean, there are quite a few um, delegates there who know very well that either Trump is completely whitewashing over some fundamental fact which we can't ignore, which is that many of these groups are not only funded directly and indirectly by Saudi Arabia, Qatar and others, but they get their ideology straight from Saudi Arabia. Wahhabism is a, is a carbon copy of what many of these groups, ISIS and their affiliates are, are, are carrying out, are, are, um, are guided by every single day from as far as the Atlantic um, Ocean right across to South Asia. So I think that point was whitewashed. Um, but I think the other interesting thing was um, it's not, it wasn't so much of what, what was Trump said today, it was what he didn't say, um, which I found mm. interesting. He didn't mention um, anything to do with President Assad, for example which I thought was interesting. You know, he mentioned Iran, he blasted Iran and Iran's um, allies and um, Iran's proxies such as Hezbollah, left out the fact that, of course, um, Iran and Hezbollah did a lot of the frontline fighting, hand-to-hand -hand fighting with ISIS. That was also um, whitewashed out. But we didn't hear anything, any promises from him about U.S. troops, about any American soldiers um, supporting um, uh, any of the initiatives in the region. So um, some of the, the speech to me came across as um, a little naive in places, but um, it was a new step for Trump, which was sobriety. You know, I mean, when you look at Trump on his own um, uh, and with his late night ranting on Twitter, he sort of comes across as a sort of lunatic at times, someone you wouldn't want any of your kids to be near. But when big business steps in, when really big, huge deals actually take over and the PR people step in and write the script, um, which I'm sure was uh, looked at beforehand by the Saudis and checked mm. with the um, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. When that happens, then Trump comes across as quite serious, um, almost faintly intelligent, and someone who seems at times even to grasp the nuances of the Middle East. Beirut-based journalist Martin Jay for your analysis this hour. Thank you.